Hey guys, today I'm talking about the poinsettia plant or the poinsettia plant, depending on how you read the pronunciation. But anyways, I'm going to tell you everything I know, how to take care of it throughout the year, how to take cuttings from it, how to repot it, and how to make it rebloom for next year. So that'll save you from having to buy an additional plant in 12, 11 months. So the poinsettia plant is known for its colorful leaves, which are called bracts. Actually, the flower is right here in the center. I'll give you a close-up of that. But these are basically just leaves. They're not flowers, but the leaves turn this color in December is when the normal time of year the flower actually blooms. I'll give you a close-up so you can see this a little better. Now, although the leaves do look like flowers, they're actually not. They're just bracts or leaves. The flower is actually this part right in here. And as you can see, this particular flower has not bloomed yet. So this happens in the month of December most commonly. This is a plant native to Mexico, and so it's known as the Christmas flower because these leaves do turn red in the month of December, and so that's why they've become such a popular holiday favorite in America. Now, these flowers will bloom, and once they do bloom, once they're pollinated, the bracts or the leaves will drop, and so that's why you want to make sure that you don't have an accidental pollinator inside your home or you try to pollinate it yourself because these leaves will drop once they're pollinated. Now there is some debate as to how toxic a poinsettia is and most people say that it's very toxic but there's some new literature I've read saying that the poinsettia is not as harmful as we once thought. Yeah there is some sap if you break it or cut it you get that on your hand you can cause a light irritation if your animal pet dog cat eats it it could cause an upset stomach but it's not as toxic I believe as they once said it is but it's still a good idea to keep any cats or dogs away from it so if you do have those living inside your home and there's a possibility they might eat a leaf or a stem, just make sure that it's high enough or out of reach for both type of animals or you probably should avoid getting a poinsettia. So if you're doing any pruning with your poinsettia or you're cutting any leaves away, make sure that you wash your tools because it can leave a sticky residue. Also, make sure you wash your hands or if you're using rubber gloves, make sure you dispose of those gloves because that can irritate your eyes and around the mouth and nose area. Now poinsettias are always known mostly as the, either red or white, but there are also some that come in varieties of orange, uh, maybe kind of a burgundy color and some mixed color. So if you look carefully, sometimes you can find other colors. But as far as for Christmas colors, I think reds and whites are the most common. Now once you get your poinsettia home, you want to put it in a window where it gets bright light. It can tolerate low light situations, but it's going to perform best if you put it in a south facing window. They can tolerate full sunlight as they are a product or native to Mexico so they can tolerate a lot of light unlike a lot of indoor house plants so you can put it in that window as long as you're getting a good amount of light you could try a west or east facing facing window as well so you want to shoot for that window of light to be about four to six hours per day now the ideal temperatures for poinsettias is around 65 to 70 degrees but at the same time inside your home you want to make sure you avoid putting it close to vents fireplaces anywhere where you have a lot of heat that might dry it out in any temperature if a poinsettia gets into an area where it gets below 50 degrees around a door that opens a lot that can damage it and if it gets to freezing it will absolutely kill the poinsettia so you never want to let your poinsettia completely dry out you want the soil to not be wet but you want it to be moist and you can use a moisture meter like this that'll let you know when at what level but if you don't have a moisture meter you can just take your finger at the top part of the soil and once that area dries out that's when you're going to water it but i'll put link one of these moisture meters down below it's really one of my favorites that i've had because it's not only measures moisture but it also measures ph in the soil now another easy way to tell if your poinsettia has dried out is if you pick it up and it feels really light it could mean the soil has dried too much i think the moisture meter is your best bet the finger the finger test is also good, but a moisture meter will let you know at different depths how much moisture you have in the soil. Now, a lot of times when you go to the big box store or some nurseries, you'll see it wrapped in plastic like this. And there's a reason for that is that they want to protect the poinsettia from drafts and cold as it's being transported from the nursery to the big box store or the plant nursery where you're purchasing it or the garden center. So that's why you have such a large amount as you're transferring it from the store out to your car, make sure you don't leave it in the car. If it's below 50 degrees that day, you want to make sure you get it as home, get it home as soon as possible. And also make sure that as you're transferring it from the store, you might actually have them tape the top of it to allow any cold drafts to get in there. Because even a small amount of cold air can cause the poinsettia maybe not to perform as well as it should throughout the rest of your holiday season. So I'm going to remove this plastic and we'll talk about watering your poinsettia throughout the holidays 
and making sure that the soil doesn't completely dry out and also that it's not waterlogged. So most of the time it's going to be wrapped with this decorative foil, foil even below the plastic wrap and this is not a draining foil. There's no holes in the bottom of it so you want to make sure you remove that and then when it's dry when you've done your test to make sure it needs watering take it set it in a sink and make sure that the pot also has drainage holes then water it in your sink and allow it to drain freely for about 30 minutes. Now if you decide you want to use a humidity tray at the base of the poinsettia that's perfectly fine but you don't want the poinsettia sitting in the water you want to fill this with gravel and have it sitting on the top of the gravel to make sure there's a slight bit of air there you might actually mound the gravel and that will keep the poinsettias soil from being constantly wet which could cause root rot. Now there's not a need to fertilize your poinsettia during the holidays but once the holidays are over and you start to see new leaves or new bracts coming out, new stems forming, then you want to fertilize it with an all-purpose plant, household plant fertilizer and I'll link one of those as, as well down below. But just remember during the holidays you don't need to fertilize it, just wait till they're over and then you can fertilize. If you fertilize during the holidays, you may have some leaf drop, so it's a good idea to wait till after January 1st. Now, if you're using a water-soluble fertilizer, I would recommend using it at half strength. Mix it one half the dosage they recommend for house plants, and do that about every three to four weeks. Now, once your frost dates are long past, at least probably a month, I would wait till mid-spring. If you're gonna take it outside, and you want to transplant it, you might want to upsize it to a pot that's maybe two to four inches larger than your current pot. Also, if you're going to actually put it into the ground, that's fine too, but you want to make sure that it's in part sun because even though it can tolerate a lot of sun, that shock from going outside and hit it being hit with full, full sun may be a little too much for it. So just remember, part sun would be best to start with. Now, another thing I did once I removed or once I started to remove the outer plastic and I'm about to remove this decorative plastic, I check for any leaves that are on the soil. You want to remove all the leaves that might have fallen off on its way from the nursery to the big box store and just make sure you have a nice clean soil surface. Now if you do opt to try to get it to survive to next winter and you want to resize the pot, make it slightly bigger, make sure that you use a good organic soil mix with lots of peat moss added to it. And also if you're doing that in the ground as well, make sure you put peat moss in that area as well. And I would say about four to five hours of direct sunlight, but not all day sunlight will benefit the poinsettia. Now, once you've transplanted that poinsettia, you want to make sure you water it, whether you're going into a larger pot or into the ground, just make sure you water it thoroughly once you've done that transplant. Now, once the holidays are passed, of course, you're going to see some leaf drop and you'll have a lot more green leaves throughout the year. And a lot of people are going to ask, well, how do I make my poinsettia turn red again or make it rebloom? And that's something you need to prepare for about a month out. Reducing the amount of light is going to be the key to getting it to change back to this color. It's going to take anywhere from four to six weeks with no light, not even a small amount of light. So just remember, you'll need to prepare for that by putting it in a completely dark place for that period of time to get it to go into this state and have the red leaves again for next holiday. Now, the biological mechanism that's taking place when you put it in complete darkness is you stop the plant from producing chlorophyll. It's what gives the plant its green leaf color and it will start allowing it to change to either red, white, or whatever, the, whatever variety of poinsettia you have. It will start changing the bracts, or as I said earlier, these are bracts, not actually flowers, but the bracts or the leaves will start to make that change once you've slowed or stopped the chlorophyll from being produced. So I'm gonna go through each period or season of the year and what you need to do to make it rebloom next year and to survive throughout the year so you'll have another plant and you don't have to go and purchase another plant. In some cases, People have done this for many, many years and never bought a poinsettia for quite a long time. Poinsettias are actually a tree, but if you keep them pruned small enough, you can keep them in this form, very compact, and it will look great for years to come. So around the beginning of the year, you're going to want to fertilize if you see new growth forming and you want to continue to water. And of course, that fertilization will also help it continue to bloom as it goes into the new year. Now early to mid-February, you're going to want to check and make sure there's no insects, small flies around there. And I've got a video I'll link up above to how to control flies around your poinsettia and other house plants. Just make sure that you monitor it carefully because sometimes the eggs can be in the soil and all of a sudden you'll have a complete infestation out of nowhere from that infected soil. So take a look at that all-natural organic solution to insects in your indoor house plants. Now also in February, you need to take a look at your plant and see if it's become too leggy. If you've got branches shooting out, you can prune it back to less than a foot tall to keep the compact growth going. 
and make it look better. Too leggy, I just don't think it's going to look good. And by the time the next holiday season arrives, it will not look like a traditional poinsettia. Now, early to mid spring, you're going to want to keep monitoring any dried leaves, removing those. Also, if any leaves are sitting on the soil surface, remove those as well. If any of the roots are exposed on the soil surface, add a quality potting soil mix. I've got a video that I'll link up right here to show you how to make your own potting soil mix, premium potting soil mix, and it'll save you a lot of money on that. And also you need to remember to keep that poinsettia in, still in that sunny window so it will perform its best once it does go outside. Now in late spring before summer actually arrives, you're going to want to prune about two to three inches off of the branches as well to pr promote some side shoots as well. And you're also going to want to make sure that you're preparing to put it into a slightly larger pot to do that transplant if you're wanting to keep it inside of a pot rather than directly in the ground. Now around the beginning of June, you can take it outside and leave it out there without any worries of cold temperatures hitting it in most parts of the country, except for maybe Alaska. But you can take it out now and leave it out there. If you decide you want to put it in the ground, that's fine as well. But remember the rule about having about five to six hours of direct sunlight maximum. In the first week of July, you're going to want to put it in direct sunlight. If you haven't planted it in the ground, then this is probably your better option because planting in the ground, you're stuck with the amount of light you're getting unless your garden changes like mine quite a bit. And some areas do get quite a bit more sun in July, but I would recommend leaving it in the pot, the newly transplanted pot, and that way you can move it into direct sunlight for those months. Now, also in July, you're going to want to do some additional pruning and you're going to want to boost your fertilization schedule to about every three weeks. I would recommend using a bloom booster, which has, has a very, very high phosphorus content. It's made by Schultz. I'll link one of those down below, but that will also prepare it for the upcoming holiday season. E even though you're only halfway there, that bloom booster will help the root system quite a bit. So once September arrives, you're going to want to move it indoors, but you want to make sure you have it in a window that gets as much light as possible, more than six hours a day, if that's possible. But also you're going to want to reduce the amount of fertilization to the strength, I mean, to about one fourth strength that it's recommended on the box. And that also will start to prepare it for the holiday season that's coming up very soon. Now, around the third week of September, towards the end of September, you're going to want to move the plant to an area where it can get 16 hours of complete darkness, total darkness, and eight hours of your bright light. So you're preparing it for these bracts to change. By doing that, you're shortening the length of the day as far as the plant is concerned, so it can start that process of changing from green to red, white, orange, whatever type of you have, pink, whatever type of poinsettia you have, it will start that process early by making the plant think the days are getting shorter, so that 16 hours is critical to get this look in your poinsettia. Now, it is a lot of work to go through that 16 hours, but you just want to make sure that it's uninterrupted, absolutely no light. So if you have to cover it with a box, put it in a closet. But another thing that's critical is getting the temperature as close to 60 degrees as possible. So if you have an unheated garage or a basement, that will also help. And you want to keep the fertilization schedule and the watering schedule just the same, the reduced fertilization concentration, and also your watering schedule must continue because you don't want it to dry out while you're going through this Brax changing process. Now, once the middle of November takes place, you can discontinue that process of the 16 hours and put it back in the window that gets six to seven hours of bright light each day. You'll also want to reduce your watering schedule maybe to half and your fertilization. Also, dilute the fertilization amount by another half and just really cut back on it because you want it to focus all of its energy on changing to this color or whatever color the variety. It normally goes into. Now if you followed all the rules throughout the fall season about the 16 hours of no light and reducing the fertilization and watering you should see the green leaves or the green bracts starting to change into this color. You'll be ready for the holidays again and you can repeat this process over and over each year. Your poinsettia will look great if you follow the rules properly. Now if you're wanting to propagate your poinsettia after the holiday season Wait till you have a really good stem shoot out and you can prune it about three or four inches off, dip it some rooting hormone, and then make sure it's sterile potting mix as well. You want to make sure you do that as well because you don't want to have any bacteria or diseases in there. Also make sure that you've sterilized your cutting shears as well. Now once you've taken your cuttings and you have it in your sterile potting mix, you want to put it in a dome cover so you can maximize the humidity. You can either use a Ziploc bag, a plastic bag, but I use the little humidity domes. I'll link some of those down below, but they work great for propagating 
your plants. Now you can also use the air layering method to propagate, but that's really a lot of work and I've never even tried it with a poinsettia. I've always done the clip and put the rooting hormone and then put it in there. That method I like. The, the, other, the other method is just seems like too much work to me. Air laying works a lot of times with hardwood cuttings. I really like doing that with things like dogwoods and bonsai as well. But as far as the poinsettia, I think I would always lean towards the cutting, cut, taking a cutting and then putting in the rooting hormone and growing it through that method. Now, once you have your cutting growing in your small humidity dome, you want to make sure that you don't have it in full sunlight or direct sunlight. Indirect bright light is going to be your friend here. And you want the temperature to remain anywhere from 65 to 75 not below 65. So if you're doing this in an unheated garage or basement, it's still cold in those areas, move it inside because that's going to work a lot better. And remember, no direct sunlight. Now, humidity will be your friend in trying to get these cuttings to root as quickly as possible. And you might use a humidity tray. If you can actually have a humidifier close to this that's on a timer, cutting on once or twice a day, or you can mist spray it. Uh, I've got a great sprayer made by Solo. I use all throughout the garden in so many ways. I think I own three of them, so I'll link one of those down below. But the solo mist spraying maybe once a day as well, not over misting, just a quick mist to keep the humidity as high as possible. So you'll just want to make sure that that soil doesn't dry out. If you use your soil pH and soil moisture meter, that will be your friend as well to make sure that your cuttings don't dry out because if they do, they're going to wilt quickly and you'll lose them before you know it. Also, to get your cuttings off to a really good start, you're going to want to fertilize with that half strength plant fertilizer, indoor plant fertilizer, about once every two weeks. Now, although we do want to maximize humidity, you're going to want to open up your humidity domes, your plastic bags, wherever you have it stored, about once every three days to allow some fresh air in. You don't want a chance for mold to start happening. So remember to do that. Set it on your phone, a timer, just a reminder to let you know you need to let some fresh air in there as well. Now, overwatering and root rot is a very common problem with cuttings. And if you see the base of your cutting starting to turn brown, you may have a major problem and you want to immediately cut back on watering. So it's better to underwater than to overwater because root rot is a very common issue. Now, if you see any black spots on the, around the root area or on the stems, that could be a fungal issue. And you want to make sure that you're sterilizing the tools. Always do that because that's going to save you a lot of problems when it comes to propagating any plant. So just remember to make sure you do that. And also, if that problem becomes worse, you might want to consider a fungicide to stop it before it totally destroys your poinsettia. Now, if you are prone to sensitivities with things like poison ivy or saps from different types of plants, I would recommend wearing gloves when you're doing this because the sap from the poinsettia can irritate the skin. It's not highly, highly toxic. But for people with sensitivities, it could be an issue. So just make sure you're wearing gloves if you know you have those kind of problems. So if you see an issue with yellowing leaves and you're not going through the 16-hour process, it could be a deficiency in the soil. You want to take your pH monitor and check the soil. Also, micronutrients may need to be added. And also, I have a recipe for using eggshells in the garden. And that also can help with calcium. I'll link that up above as well. So as I mentioned early in the video is the actual flowers are right in the center of the bracts or the leaves. And that's what you want to look for. If these are open, it probably means the poinsettia has been blooming and it's already starting to get past its prime. So you want to make sure those flowers are still in their closed state. If you purchase it and they're already open, it may not last long. Once you get it home, it may be already past their prime. Now, as I said earlier in the video, the big plastic wrapping is to protect it from any drafts or sudden temperature changes. But one thing that can hide is behind this, you can have a lot of leaves that have dropped, a lot of yellowing. So one thing to do in the store is to pull that back and look and see if there's a lot of leaves that's dropped or there's a lot of issues under the wrapping, which could mean that it's past its prime and it's been in the store too long. So just remember to do an inspection of the plant, if at all possible, to pull that back. So often poinsettias go on sale in my area around November, and our winters are fairly mild here in Zone 7A. But if you live in a climate area that's extremely cold in winter, just the transportation from the store to your home can damage the plant. So if it's below 40 degrees, get it as home as quickly as possible. And even from the store, as I said earlier, get them to seal the top of it so now that cold air can get to it. And then that way it can make it home without any damage from the cold winds or air. So guys, if the poinsettia makes you think of the Christmas holidays as it does me, it's one of those plants that you just love seeing it family gatherings and family get togethers or 
Christmas parties, wherever it might be. But just remember, you want to take good care of it and follow these rules along, and you can have the poinsettia growing in your home for many years to come. So anyways, I hope this information was helpful. If I left anything out, I hope you'll leave a comment. And if you've liked the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.